I'm sure you have all seen and eaten an onion. But have you ever wondered what the cells of an onion look like? In this video, we are going to do exactly that. We are going to prepare a slide of an onion peel and observe it under a compound microscope. For that, these are the following things that you would require from your dissection box. We will require clean glass slides, cover slips, needle, a scalpel, forceps, a pair of scissors, onions, a little bit of glycerin and I am using methylene blue stain to stain the slide. You may use saffronin or any other stain that is available. Now let us start with the work. So first of all, I have taken an onion and cut it into halves and then I will have to peel out one of the fleshy leaves of onion. So you see, I will just take out the leaves in such a manner that I get rid of this dry scaly leaf which is present outside and I only have this fleshy part that I need. Now after this we are going to knead the inner lining of this fleshy leaf which is actually an epidermal layer. How will I take it out? So I break this in a small into a small portion and then with the help of a pair of forceps I will just tease the inner lining of the onion peel with a forceps or you can here use a scalpel but a forceps is always very convenient you just have to tease it and you will see the inner lining is coming out like a thin strip all right, so this is the layer of epidermis that we require. However, we do not require so much. So what we will do is we will quickly and everything has to be done very quickly because you do not want the cells to dry up. So very quickly, I will take a small piece of this peel and this much is enough. In fact, this is more than enough. I will put this in the methylene blue stain that I have taken on a watch glass. So now you can see that the specimen is inside the stain and depending on the strength of the stain you might have to keep it for a couple of minutes to five minutes. After this we will take a clean glass light. We will take the stained specimen once it has been stained you can take it and we will have to place it on the glass slide. But before that, we will use a little bit of glycerine and put it on the slide. Why are we using glycerine? We are using glycerine because we do not want the specimen to dry out while we are observing it under the microscope. The glycerine will keep the specimen moist. Okay. Now, we will take the specimen out of the stain, place it on the slide. Make sure that this section that you have taken does not roll. So if you find that it is rolling anywhere, you can simply hold it with your forceps and tease it with the needles so that it is straight and it is laid out on the slide. To make sure that this specimen does not dry out, we will have to cover it with a cover slip. Now this is a cover slip. Here I am using a square cover slip. You can use a round cover slip if you have one. But while we put down the cover slip, we have to be very sure that there is no air bubble trapped inside. Because if there is air bubble inside, then it will not be clearly visible. The specimen will not be clearly visible under the microscope. So there is a certain technique for laying down the cover slip such that you do not have air bubbles inside. Let me show you how. So we will just touch the cover slip onto the slide and balance it, support it with the needle and we will slowly take the needle out very slowly 
and you will see that there is no air bubble left. Now under this cover slip now we have the specimen ready. So now what do we have to do? We will have to simply put the slide under the microscope and observe it. So here I am using a compound microscope. We have already seen the parts of a compound microscope. First I will be using a 10x magnification which is low power and then I will be using a 45x magnification which is high power to observe the cells. What kind of cells do you expect to see in the onion peel? Since these are epidermal cells and these are plant cells, we expect to see nucleated cells. We expect to, to see cells which have a very strong boundary or a very distinct boundary and usually the epidermal cells are rectangular in shape. So let us see how the cells will look like and then we can write down the characteristic features. So now I will just focus the microscope. I am using the 10x magnification. I will focus the slide. So here we can see the cells in low power. As you can see, we have seen that these cells have a distinct boundary because these are plant cells, so they have a cell wall. They are living cells, so you can see a clear blue dot inside which is the nucleus and what is the location of the nucleus? The nucleus is located towards the periphery of the cell. You also see that these cells are rectangular in shape, brick-like and are absolutely closely packed because you want an epidermal layer to be closely packed. There should be no gap so that it can provide enough protection. The cytoplasm has been stained light blue whereas the nucleus has taken up a dark blue stain. Let us bring this under high power and see if we can magnify the nucleus and the cytoplasm a little further. So you see under the high power you see less number of cells. Why? Because when you are magnifying the tissue in a microscopic field in low power you see a large area and therefore you can see a larger number of cells. The moment you use a higher magnification, you see a smaller area of the specimen. Although the image is magnified, you see lesser number of cells. But the nucleus is prominent here, so is the cytoplasm. We cannot see the cell organelles because for that we need a much higher magnification which is possible with the help of an electron microscope. So that was all for today's class. I am sure you enjoyed it. We will be back with more such virtual practical classes from Manocha Academy. Thank you and see you soon. Subscribe to our channel and go to our website www.manochaacademy.com for courses on physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics and computer coding. Hope you will have fun. Happy learning.